Hi, my name is Abu Francis and in this short video, I'll explain to you how you can quickly get started with TAD. So as you can see in the screen, you will see that I have started TAD and I have switched off the splash screen. And now I will click on this particular button to start work on a new model. Now this particular TAD file is simply a, a file which is by default given in your installation folder and if you want you can later on replace it. Our documentation has uh, uh, more details on how you can replace that default file and if you don't want to see this particular model but if you are working with something which you always would like to have your starting points then you can replace that file with your own file. Now. Uh, let me quickly start uh, creating some shapes that which in TAD are called objects and there's a reason why they are called objects and the name of the objects are given here and they are gathered into classes which is given here inside a tree shape. So without much further ado let me just drag one rectangle in one empty area here and if you see uh, on the top it is actually reading out the dimensions uh, roughly and you can say okay 5 meters by 3.4 meters good enough for a small living room so I'll say living room and I press that the moment I do that you must have seen there were two dots here and those two dots now start appearing here that's called the red dot and a blue dot if you put your mouse on those those uh, dots over there it'll, on the top you will see here in this part just follow where my mouse is so it'll sh it'll show you where the, uh, what that particular element is okay uh, what does it mean in fact you, it does that for all the things which is there here everywhere you can start understanding that by just simply moving a mouse around here so i've created this particular uh, uh, room and there are these two helpers they are called helpers this is called the first helper which is a red square dot and this is called the second helper which is a blue circular dot and there's another shape which is known as the architect and that architect is right now snugly next to that particular first helper. So they're both at the same point. Now the architect is uh, a, a square shape uh, with a kind of a point to say that or the top left point is to be considered. Now the architect can be dragged around. Uh, you will see that the moment the cursor is on that particular shape, it changes its into a kind of a triangle which is the same triangle which you see inside that indicates uh, that uh, you can now drag that particular architect to wherever you want drag means to press your left uh, mouse cursor uh, mouse button and then move the mouse around now as you move it around you will see various dimensions uh, and uh, perpendicular distances like is the distance between the architect and these two helpers you can use these two buttons to move the helpers around or you can press f3 and f4 to move it around so the helpers and the architect are three personalities available on this site. This whole white area is known as the site. And it has got certain very useful properties that it's always at available for you to take decisions. This architect here, this, the shape here is a metaphor of you yourself over there on that site. And you're always looking down in plan form. In TAD, everything is done on plan form. Even elevations are done on plan form. It's like you you take the elevations and put it on the ground somewhere and start working on it and later on it will pin it up uh, take it up take 90 degrees and pin it to the right location but let me not confuse you right now i've created only one shape now i don't want these uh, other shapes what i do is that i will drag the mouse in such a way that i will uh, cover these uh, corners of the shapes which i don't want so that got selected if you notice that when I, am, I was uh, dragging in an empty space, it will think that you're creating a new object. But if you're dragging in a place where there are other objects and it covers some of the corners over there of those objects, then it gets selected. Now, once these objects are selected, I can just delete them. So now this is free. Now you may wonder what happened to these triangles here. There are three, four triangles. Actually, there's one small triangle there also, a uh, very tiny triangle. I mean. I'll tell you about them later that is to do with the way the viewing of this the 3d viewing of this is set up so in first floor class right now I have only living room but I need some more space here because this is too restrictive I want to create some shape and if I drag a rectangle here this particular two triangles or the third one also will start getting selected so what I'll do is that 
I'll click on this particular button, which is the zoom up button and mark out one rectangle. This time nothing gets selected, but instead the view gets uh, pulled into that rectangle, which I have uh, dragged. So I get more space because of that. Now I sh click on this button here, which is for uh, creating mm, or selecting and uh, creating objects. So it's called the selection cursor. Now here I will kind of, you know, drag and I'll say, okay, about three meters. Oh, no, this is one minute. I can't use it here. Let me go somewhere from here and then I'll drag out outwards. So that's about say three meters, 3.6, 3.6 by three meters. Okay. For now it's fine. So I'll make a bedroom there. So I have created the bedroom in such a way that the bedroom is now located at uh, a little gap. That gap represents the wall thickness between these two rooms. And how it becomes a wall is pretty interesting. Okay, this is not how we normally draft. Now what I'll do is that I'll zoom up here or rather zoom down here and you can see that that gap is there and the architect is snugly fitting there. Now, let me zoom all and uh, but I need some more space. So what I'll do is now I'll select these two objects and I'll drag it a little bit to the left, both of them and uh, unselect it. Now I will create a, a rectangle here in this particular area, which will represent the kitchen. So let's say that it is about two meters by 2.85, whatever. Okay. I'm just eyeballing it for now in this particular demonstration. I'm not getting into uh, precisely placing it that we will do a little later. Uh, and I can explain to you maybe in a, another video right now. I want to quickly get you the excitement of start uh, how you can start using tad so you got now three objects here they're all gathered under the class called first floor so one two three okay and now i'll select these three objects by dragging a rectangle so that it covers some of the corners the moment it covers that corner it knows that it needs to be selected if i cover it again it gets unselected so that's how you get selection and unselection there are other ways also to select it but right, let me right now show you the way you can interactively select objects now what i do is that i go to create and i say i want an envelope around it i'll give a value of it a name of it called env and give a offset value of 0.23 and i click on create and there you have it suddenly i find that the external wall is also started coming and you now you can very clearly see the internal walls also so it's uh, a very different way of uh, uh, constructing a floor plan uh, than what you may have used to but it's actually a lot more logical uh, way of doing it because you can actually see that this is the living room sorry that's a kitchen uh, and the helpers are now on the kitchen and now the helpers are on the bedroom and the helpers are now on the living room so you are actually now talking about the logical elements of your design and it, it you'll start actually if there are other colleagues in your office or your collaborators you can actually you know say that you know the living room i think it's small or big or i think the orientation is not right i think that offset is not right or whatever whatever you want to discuss you're not really getting into the graphics command inside this that can all be done later at your own pace and at your own uh, you know uh, logical need of what you want to rearrange now it's you may think that it only makes rectangles. No, you can always reshape these rectangles to whatever you want. There are some editing commands where you can add more corners and shift corners and you can change the uh, the type of uh, edge which you have. You want a circular apps over there. You can do that. All those you can do quite easily. But uh, in this particular demo, let's stick to uh, a very rough kind of eyeballed kind of design. Now I'm excited to see, can I see the 3D of this? Now, how does a 3D work? There is a cl special class called view and inside that class, there are two objects called location and locate. Okay. Now, where are they? Where is location? Now, if I double click on that, it will show that location is here and, and look at is here. So if I want to zoom all, so uh, I'm still not able to understand where that thing is. So I'll just zoom like this and I'll say, where is location? So location is here. And where is look at? Look at is here. So it's actually uh, from the location towards the look at is where that uh, camera is pointed. And now you say, okay, let me shift this location 
Now, if you see the moment I uh, take the mouse over the first helper, it immediately goes into a pinching kind of uh, cursor, which indicates what I can do with that. So uh, I can just move that uh, uh, particular object away from there. And uh, now I have, you know, I'm standing at a distance and I'm looking at it. Now here is a preview button here. I can click on that. Now I'm excited, but then I can't see the building. There's no building here. What happened? Like, uh, the reason is that all these shapes which you created, they are, though I'm calling it objects, but they are actually 2D shapes. Now I want to make it 3D. So what I do is that I go to this first floor and then go to the class section of it. And I say it is all these objects are placed at a level of zero and and it has a height of 1.5 meters. Okay, and I have to press this button otherwise, sorry, no, 1.5 1 is too tiny. I'll make it 3.5, sorry. So I'll make it 3.5 and uh, so it's a reasonably about 10 foot, uh, 10 and a half feet or so uh, height of the building. Now that the, uh, the location is here and the locate is there, I think I should get a view at this point in time. So I click on this and sure enough, there is a view and I can use this horizontal scro scroll bar and I can see the, the, that entire three rooms with the envelope around it. And now you are started appreciating the 3D form of this particular design. Not just that, actually the areas of this, everything is now available actually. If you go to first floor and if you click on ENV and go to info, it will tell me that the area is 41.88 uh, whatever square meters. Now obviously this is an eyeball design. I have not really worked on it accurately, but you can of course make it very accurate uh, based on uh, as you work with this particular project and it will go uh, more, um, uh, more and more clearer and become more and more... Uh, uh, what do you say, uh, detail as you get into, you can go into whatever details you want. So TAD does not really restrict you and say, no, you have to just eyeball everything and do it. No, you can actually very precisely going around, you can go around uh, placing uh, objects. I'll have another video which shows the preciseness of TAD which you can get into. Now what happens is that uh, you can actually start taking logical decision. You'll say, oh, you know what, maybe this bedroom should not be on the same f level as this rest of the class. Right now, all these four objects, the outer envelope, everything has been given the same height and same level, which is actually not logically right. The envelope is actually more, it is covering the entire room. The room inside is smaller, right? by the thickness of the slab and also we'll worry about that later for now let's assume that we have given everything the same height and and put everything on the same level but you are an architect and you started thinking about your design and say what if i shift this whole bedroom up so let's do that let's say that i want to shift this bedroom up what do i do is i go to that specific object and i change the level to 3.5 meters okay that's the next level 0 to 3.5 so now this object is at 3.5 upwards and then I'll give it a height of three meters and I have to press this button. Now, if you see this, you will see that uh, that bedroom is now stuck up on the wall, but you find that the envelope is still covering an empty area here. Okay. I mean, that envelope should not be there. So what I do is that I right click on that. I mean, that's a shortcut way of going. I could have clicked on this particular button here. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this name here, uh, not the button uh, inside this objects. And then uh, the helpers would have gone to that uh, particular uh, object. But I wanted to make sure that the helper is on that particular uh, object over there. Now what I do, I press control backspace. So it deletes that particular vertex. Again, I put one more control backspace. So it was like a rubber band around it. The moment I removed the pin of that rubber band, uh, that particular object reshaped itself and now if you see it is now a kind of I mean this is still there is some anomaly here because I have not really worked out the dimensions and the correct spacing and all that for now let us forgive that and if you see the 3D you will find that it is a little bit more realistic and there you see the bedroom hanging in the air of course the bedroom itself does not have its own envelope and the, there is no wall around it and that's the beauty of TAD. TAD actually allows you to gradually shape up your design the way you would do as you sketch your design. So uh, the, just the way I created an envelope around it, you can start creating an envelope around that particular uh, bedroom which is now floating on the first floor. So 
this is the way tad actually fleshes out a design and you can go into any level of detail as you want as you are comfortable with there are a lot of sample files which are there in tad which you can use uh, to refer that okay you can do this uh, uh, you can do pretty complex stuff and you can also make separate elevations and stick to it let me show you a, a, a bungalow which i had done for my uh, uncle now tad is usually uh, uh, installed in this particular location and you will see this uh, tad samples directory just scroll down and go to peter uncle bungalow and if you see here that you are actually created elevations somewhere or the other on that particular ground now the elevation are also coming out from the ground but tad has got a very interesting system called pinning so it takes it from there and then it pin, pins it to the right location so if you see this in 3d uh, you will find that uh, uh, the entire uh, 3d view voila it is there and you can really flesh out uh, a pretty interesting complex uh, uh, shape pretty fast. Uh, so this is uh, a bungalow but uh, this takes a little time obviously because I've very precisely gone around locating all the elements and all that. Now there's a fair amount of uh, very interesting simple theories uh, which is which are there behind uh, this way of working but broadly what it does is that it actually inverts the normal process by which we architects have been taught that normally we've been asked to you know lovingly flesh out the walls of whatever we are designing but here if you saw it is actually fleshing out the rooms and then putting another space around the rooms which is the envelope and suddenly you've got the walls also the external walls so internal walls everything so that's a very interesting uh, inversion which is there so you can read this uh, uh, buddhist verse uh, verse v e r s e uh, in the splash screen and you can read that 30 spoke share the wheels hub it's the center hole that makes it useful shape clay into a vessel it's a space within that makes it useful cut doors and windows for a room it's the holes that make it useful therefore profit comes from what the, what is there and usefulness come from what is not there so a, as a human we are always involved in spaces and what that does is that it allows you to give life to those spaces and the built matter emerges from that thank you very much